Hi everybody, this is Catherine from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore in the Sewing Studio at Lady Lake. I cannot wait to talk to you today about this super impressive, easy to use, lightweight, awesome Baby Lock Presto. Let's get started. Before we get into the real instruction on this machine, I just want to highlight some of the key features that make it such an awesome machine. So first of all, there's a hundred built-in stitches that you have access to with just the touch of a button. You have four fonts as well, which is really good for labels and things like that. It additionally stitches at 850 stitches per minute, which is super impressive. You have an LCD screen, which is really easy to use to let you know where you are and what you're doing. You have an advanced needle threader, which we all love and adore. You have an automatic thread cutter feature, which is really wonderful as well. There is 8.3 inches of space here in the bed of the machine. And this machine only weighs, if you lift it up, 20.37 pounds. So it's super portable, easy to use for class, but it's strong enough and heavy enough to really handle some of your thicker layers and heavier duty projects. Okay, let's get into the instruction. Okay, let's just go over some of the included accessories that you'll find in your box. So first of all, you have a little accessory pouch which is available to you. It's got a few extra feet and screwdrivers in it. When you first open that up, you'll also find your J foot, which is your standard utility presser foot, your N foot, which is your decorative stitching foot, your G foot, which is your overcasting foot, allowing you to keep the edges of your fabric sealed, your R foot for doing blind hems, your M foot, which is a button fitting foot, as well as your A foot, which is your button hole foot. And then you also have a double sided I foot, which is your zipper foot. You're going to have four bobbins, one of which is in the machine. And this is the accessory tray that all your feet come in. You'll notice the little latches on that tray. Those latches help hold your feet in so that they don't just go spilling everywhere. Okay, you have a screwdriver as well as a disc shaped screwdriver. You have a cleaning brush as well as a little a stylus. You have a thread net in case you have some fussy threads you need to deal with and manage. You've got your awl. You have a little screwdriver here as well, which is really good actually for removing the bolt of the machine to put on additional feet like a walking foot. You have a little multi-pack of needles that's got three different kinds of needles in it, a twin needle set, as well as a seam ripper. You'll have several spool caps in your box, your large, medium, and small, as well as your mini spool cap. And you have an auxiliary spool pin, which is for using the twin needle. So your second spool of thread would actually go on this right here. You also have your foot pedal available to you. In order to install your power cord, you've got a flat side of your fat power cord and a rounded side. So you're going to simply install your power cord with the flat side towards the back of the machine. Press it in place. And then over here, this is where you're going to install your foot pedal. So right here at the side of the machine, you've got a port and you'll simply install your foot pedal right into that port. In order to remove your accessory bin so that you have access to your free arm for sewing your round objects like a pant leg or a sleeve, simply grab a hold of the end of this. Underneath there's a little port and pull. And that's how you easily remove your accessory bin. To reinstall it, simply slide it right back into place. So I'm going to talk about how we raise and lower the presser foot. At the back of the machine, you have a lever. This is your presser foot lifter button. So if you push it up and back, you are going to raise your presser foot. If you bring it down and towards you, you're lowering your presser foot. Okay, so here at the back of your machine, this is where you've got a little lever that's going to allow you to drop your feed dogs in case you want to do free motion sewing. So right now you can see that we've got it over here on this side. On this side, you've got little triangles that are depicted being cut through the middle by a line. That means your feed dogs are going up and down under, you know, up and over your needle plate and down underneath it doing your regular sewing. In order to drop them, simply toggle that lever to the right and it's going to drop your feed dogs. Now, when you want to go back to engaging your feed dogs so that you can do your regular sewing, you're going to toggle your switch back over here. However, you have to go through one rotation in order to actually engage them on your machine. I'm going to go over how to install your thread on the machine, 
how to properly wind your bobbin, and how to thread the machine, okay? When you install your thread on the machine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your thread is coming off the bottom of the spool. That's ideal for the good proper tension. If you have an old school slit cut into the edge end of your um, spool cap, you wanna make sure that that slit is on the right end, which might mean your thread is coming off the top. But for the most part, do your best to try and make sure that thread is coming off the bottom of your spool. So once you've got that, you're going to place your spool cap on to hold your sp spool firmly in place. You want to match your spool cap to the size spool that you're using. So don't use too big or too small. Match it up as best you can. Okay, if we look over here, we've got two sets of lines. You have a dotted line and a solid line. Your dotted line is the path that you follow when you're installing your bobbin thread. Your solid line is the path that you follow when you're threading the machine. So we're going to begin with installing our bobbin. When you look at your bobbin, the bobbin has a little slit cut into one little portion of it. That little slit needs to attach itself onto this little wire on the back of your bobbin winding pin. Now, that's almost impossible to see. So what you need to do is just simply place your bobbin down onto your bobbin winding area. Then spin your bobbin towards the right until it clicks. You'll hear that click when the wire locks itself into the little groove on your bobbin. Okay, so now you're gonna take a hold of your thread. I like to keep a grip on it with one hand so that I know that I don't have loosey-goosey and I can actually manage my thread. You'll begin by starting here at the back. One is one for both threading the machine and winding the bobbin. Then we're gonna come under this metal pin and head straight back up. Once you're there, we're going to now break off to the right in order to do the bobbin. So I'm going to switch hands so that I've got my right hand and I'm going to take my left hand and hold on to that thread again so I've got a little bit of tension on it and I can manage it a little bit better. Now, back here at this portion, we're going to start by making the letter L. So it's going to swoop around this metal rail right here and we're going to bring the thread down directly in between this metal rail and this little bobbin tension disc. So I'm starting at the back and then I'm coming straight down forward and then I'm swinging over to the right. Now, that means that the thread here kind of locks in under this tension disc from like nine o'clock to around five o'clock. So just make sure as you pull your thread that you can feel that there's tension on it. Once you have that, you're gonna head over here towards your bobbin and you're going to wind your thread clockwise from the back to the front around six or seven times. Once you've got your thread in place, you're going to then, right here, there's a little slit cut into the like holder of this bobbin. The, that little slit is where we're gonna place the thread. So simply roll it off of your finger and then get your thread into that groove and pull it to the right. It is going to cut and pinch that thread into place for you. Once you've got that accomplished, go ahead and push your bobbin over to the right, engaging it here against this little guide for your bobbin. Now, I don't have the foot pedal plugged in, so I can use my start stop button to wind this bobbin thread. The start stop button is located here on the front of the machine and it's orange in color right now. That's indicating that I have my bobbin pressed up against the bobbin guide so that I know that I'm about to wind my bobbin. I'm going to go ahead and touch start and it starts winding my bobbin. When I'm satisfied with the amount of bobbin thread that I want, like let's say I just want like a half a bobbin, all I have to do is simply press stop and it will stop winding that bobbin for me. Once I've done that, I can disengage my bobbin, lift it up, and generally, instead of reaching for scissors, I use that same cutter right there to cut my bobbin thread. So now my bobbin is ready to install on the machine. Once I've removed my bobbin, I can simply bring this thread down so that I can take it from doing the bobbin to threading the machine. Again, I like to hold onto the thread so that I've got a little bit of tension on it, which helps me manage it a little bit better. As I start to thread the machine, right here at the back of the machine is the very first set of tension discs that are in play with the thread. The tension discs pinch down and hold the thread and manage it for you while you're sewing. Now, why I mention that is that 
that here, there is a little door which closes when your presser foot is down. When that door is closed, all of the tension discs are closed, which means as I thread the machine, right from the very beginning of threading it, I need to make sure my foot is up so that this is open to receive my thread, so that this is open to receive my thread, so that the thread can come into play. So I'm gonna start by raising that presser foot. It's very important that it's up right there at the beginning of threading. Once again, I'm holding onto my thread so that I have something to manage and it's easier for me to actually thread the machine. So I'm gonna start here at one. One is one for both the bobbin and the thread again. Again, I'm coming under that little center pin and then I'm heading straight up. Once I've got that, I'm gonna swing around to the left this time and straight down that channel. Here at number three, we're gonna U-turn and head back up. Once we do that, you'll notice that here at number four, we're gonna start on the right side and swing around towards the left side. That'll help us get into the uptake lever. So again, start on the right and swing down on the left. Once we're here at number five, we're gonna come right here and we're gonna actually thread here by the needle bar. Okay, so let's take a nice close look here at the number six area for threading our machine. This is the needle bar right here where the, it's gonna help guide the thread as it heads down towards the needle. However, right on top of that needle bar, there's a little piece of metal. So when we put the thread in here, it's almost like flossing your teeth. You have to pop it in between those two pieces of metal. So I like to have a good grip on my thread and I'm going to bring my thread from here to the right and then push it over to the left. And it's gonna pop into place there in between those two pieces of metal. From there, we're gonna pass up towards number seven, kind of passing through these little chompers as I like to call them on the way to number seven. Once I'm at number seven, it actually clicks into place right there so that it's holding the thread. At that point, I need to bring my thread up and I'm going to cut my excess thread there at number eight on the side of the machine. Once I've gotten to that point, we're almost done. Simply put your foot down just to give yourself a little bit of extra clearance. And then here on the side of the machine, you're gonna take a hold of that thread lever and push it down. That has created a little loop towards the back of the machine, which has threaded your needle for you. Woohoo! When you're installing your needle, this is the screw that you're gonna grab a hold of and turn towards yourself in order to remove and install your needle. Once you've got your needle installed, you'll turn this backwards away from you in order to tighten the needle down. Now, what I wanna point out right here, and this is very, very important, you've got a round dot that round dot is the stopping point for the needle. You can actually see the needle inserted up into the machine right there and touching that stopping dot. So it's very important to have your needle installed fully up into the machine. It's also important to make sure that your needle is all the way up in the proper highest position. In order to install the bobbin, we're gonna begin by taking a hold of this little rectangular button right here. We're gonna push it to the right as indicated by that little arrow right there. When you do that, your bobbin cover pops open. So just set that aside for a moment. In order to install your bobbin down into that bobbin area, you're gonna to wanna to install your bobbin so that the thread is coming off of it counterclockwise. You could think about it like a P for perfect. Once you've got that, you're gonna go ahead and just drop your bobbin right down into your machine. Now, once you've done that, I like to hold my finger on that bobbin with gentle pressure because when we swing our bobbin thread under this area to install it into the bobbin tension area, we really need to have it slip in there with, with um, good strength. So I like to hold that down so that it doesn't move. Once I've done that, I'm going to swing my thread from around five o'clock to nine o'clock. If we look at this like a clock, so five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once we're there, we're going to head our thread up over this little groove. Now here on the end of the groove, there's actually a little razor, which is going to cut our excess thread for us. Once you've got that excess thread cut off, we're ready to reinstall our bobbin cover. The bobbin cover has a little bit of a nub right there, which inserts underneath that little rectangular port right there of metal. So simply insert that tab and push down to click your bobbin cover back into place.
Let's take a moment to examine this needle plate while we have a nice up close look at it. So along the back of the needle plate, we have markings and indications. These are there so that you can line your fabric up against the appropriate distance for your proper seam allowance. These indications are based off of a left needle position and are often used for garments and garment making. So right there, you can see you've got a five eighths of an inch marking. That would be your common marking for seam allowance for garments. Here across the front part right there, we've got our measurements in metric. Along the front here, we've got an, a little quarter inch bobbin cover. So this is actually based off of a center needle position. So when we're looking at this plate, if I have my fabric lined up against this line right here, that means that when my needle is in the center needle position, I'm going to have my perfect quarter inch. In order to install our foot, take a look right here at the front of the foot. There's a little bar across here. That bar gets clamped into and held into position right here on the presser foot holder. So when I'm installing my foot, I like to gently get my little bar right underneath that area and then slowly and carefully bring my presser foot down so that I can attach it very easily right there. I like to do a little kind of tag on it to make sure it's not going to fall off, that it's being held nice and in place. And then once I've got it on, if I want to change my presser feet over to a different foot, back here at the back of the presser foot holder, there's a little black lever. Simply squeeze it towards the front of the machine and the foot is going to drop right off. Okay, let's take a moment here to talk about the buttons that are here on the face of the machine. So first of all, we're going to start with this right here. So this is your start stop button. When your presser foot is up, it's red indicating that it's not ready to sew just yet. If I put my presser foot down, now it turns green. Green is good because that means you're ready to go, ready to sew. Now, this start stop button does not work when you have your foot pedal plugged in. This is only for use when you do not have your foot pedal plugged in. All right, right here we have our reverse button. It's a very smart reverse button, however. If you've chosen a stitch that has a locking stitch to it, as opposed to a reversing stitch, this is going to do the purpose that is indicated on that particular stitch. And I'll get into that as we select our stitches. Right here, this is a reinforcement key or a locking key. And this is actually quite clever because what this will do when you select this button, that that light is going to turn green and on your decorative stitches, it will finish that particular motif as opposed to just stopping dead right wherever you are. So if I wanted to just stop right dead, just right there in the middle of whatever I was doing, I might select this button. But if I want to finish off that particular scallop, say, I can go ahead and select this, watch that turn green and it will finish that scallop instead of stopping in the middle of it. This is your needle up, needle down button. So wherever your needle is, it goes where it isn't. Right now, my needle is in the up position. If I was to push this, it would go down. If it was in the down position, I would select this and it would go back up. This is your cut function. Oh, we love this cut function. It is wonderful. So when I get to the end, if I want to have the threads pulled down underneath and then the razor to come out and cut, this is the button that I'm going to select in order to do that. Right here, we have an automatic speed control. Now this is really, really wonderful. This variable speed doesn't just go slow, medium, or fast. It's actually a sliding scale. So if I don't have my foot pedal plugged in, this will allow me to select my speed so that I can go ahead and sew. And often when I'm sewing, I'll be going along right here at mid speed. And as I come close to a corner, I might reach up and quickly toggle that down to slow so that I can get those last few stitches as I come up to the corner, stop, turn my piece, and then go back up to medium and start up again so that I can continue with the other side of my, say, placemat or my piece that I'm currently working on. Now, if I have my foot pedal plugged in, this acts as like a jockey holding the reins onto my foot. So if I have this set at super slow, when I slam on the gas, it's not going to go any faster 
then super slow. If I have it at mid speed, it does not let me take off full tilt boogie. It keeps me from going <laughs> the speed limit as it were here at medium. Now, if I have this all the way up at the highest speed, my foot will then be in total control. So again, without the foot pedal, this is the speed. And with the foot pedal plugged in, this kind of controls or monitors or governs that particular speed of my foot. Let's take a moment to talk about the two manual dials that are on the top of your machine. First, this one right here, right here by the threading area. This little dial is your tension dial. Most of the time, you're going to leave your tension set on four. Four is just a nice standard tension for most of the sewing that you're gonna be doing. If you slide that to this direction, you'll notice that the little black background disappears. And now here we have just open space. So this allows you to swing one direction or the other direction if you want to change your tension for a decorative thread or for some sort of unusual purpose. But again, most of the time you're gonna leave your tension dial right at four and it does everything perfectly for you. Okay, the second little dial right here is for your presser foot pressure. Honestly, I've never even used this. The idea of it would be if I've got some sort of thick fabric, I might wanna dial it one way or a thin fabric dial the other way. I tend to leave well enough alone. If you wanna increase or decrease your presser foot pressure, this is where you do it. Please, please, please reference your manual for what is the best setting for what you're gonna be working on. However, most of the time, I just leave it alone right there at two. All right, let's take a second to review the LCD screen and the information that it presents you. Okay, so if we start in the top left hand corner, you'll notice that there's a little picture of a presser foot. This is going to have the information of given whatever stitch you've chosen, what presser foot you should have on. So right now I have stitch number three here on the keyboard. That means that I should have the J foot on that. Now, if I had chosen a different stitch, this is going to have a different letter appear. So right there, it tells you what presser foot to use. Right here, we have an indication of a continuous sewing mode. I'll get into that in more detail as I discuss these buttons here on the face of the machine. But right there, I have a heart and a heart and a half. So then that way it just indicates that I'm in continuous mode. Here in the top right hand corner, there are two different bits of information. So first of all, this one here on the left side, this is showing me that the needle is customized to stop in the down position. If I wanted to change that and stop in the up position, it's gonna look like that on the screen where the needle is touching that line. To have it stop in the down position, right here, I'm gonna select that button and it's going to show me with this line kind of cutting across the needle that I'm stopping in the down position. Here on the top right, right hand corner, the furthest right, we can see the needle is in the center of that oval. That's indicating that the needle is going to wake up in the center needle position. Now, if I choose to have it wake up in the left needle position, I'm going to select this button right here and that puts me over in the left. And I can see that the needle has now moved to the left side of that oval. So actually left needle position is really good for thicker items and garments. And that's where the needle plate markings are based off of that left needle position. But when you're quilting, you're gonna be there in the center needle position. So that's per your choice and per your project. Okay, right here, this is a little kind of like telephone keypad looking way of selecting your stitches. That little button right there is showing me that right now I'm in my keypad mode of stitch selection. So if I pick a stitch here on my keypad, now all of a sudden I'm in stitch number nine. That shows me there that I'm in the G foot. And that G foot is an overcasting foot and that would let me do my overcasting casting stitch. And that's all right away on that keypad mode of selection. 
right here, this is showing me the stitch number that I have selected. Because I'm in the keypad way of selecting, I have chosen stitch number nine. If I wanted to go to just a normal zigzag with a reverse, say number five, that is stitch number five. So I can see clearly which stitch I'm about to put onto my fabric. All right, now here at the bottom of the screen, we have our width, and our length. I kind of picture this little W as a tornado. This little tornado is a W on its side. So that's my width selection. And you'll notice that there is an oval around that little W. That is indicating that this particular width setting is the default setting for this particular stitch. Right here on this one, we have a dot, a medium dash, and a long jump. So this right here is our stitch length. Again, because the oval is around it, that's indicating that this particular setting is the standard stitch length for this stitch that I have chosen. If I wanted to make it wider, because we are in a zigzag, I would simply add to my width, and that goes up to four, and it actually goes up quite a ways. So there we are at 5.5. So that is showing me that I'm at my maximum width and this is a setting that I have placed on the machine as opposed to the setting which is the default for this stitch. All right. So now we've seen that these are my width and my length. Now down here on the width, this is where this little line is right below the width setting. This is where I can increase and decrease my width, plus increasing, minus decreasing. Same thing on the length. This little dash right here is indicating that it is on the length setting. So I can add to my length, making the stitch longer, or take away from my length, making that stitch shorter. You have over a hundred stitches available to you on this beautiful Baby Lock Presto. And those stitches are shown right here on display in the lid of your machine. You also have four fonts that are available to you. And I'm just gonna take a second to show you how we can access these particular stitches. So first of all, we've got this little indication right here. That's showing me that these stitches here are my utility stitches. You've got a straight stitch, a zigzag, and a buttonhole. This is your hard working stitches. Now, if I wanna select one of these stitches, I'm going to begin by selecting that button on the face of my machine. So let's just say I wanted to do this little decorative, let's do this little decorative stitch right here. This is stitch number 41. So I'm going to start here on the face of my machine and select that utility key. Once I'm in that utility key, I'm going to type in 41. Now that will let me do that stitch. Let's say I wanted to do stitch number four here, which is a center needle position with a reinforce. I'm on that selection and you can see that it's indicated right there on the LCD portion of the screen. I wanna do stitch number four, so I actually have to type in zero four. Now I'm in my center needle with a reinforcement. So that's how I access these guys right here. Now let's look at these decorative stitches. These decorative stitches are all in this little leaf vine menu. So let's say I wanted to do this pretty stitch right here, number 07. I'm going to select my vine and you can see that the vine is indicated right there and I have to type in 07 in order to do that stitch right there. That lets me pick that little decorative stitch. If I wanna access my fonts, first of all, you're gonna to wanna to pull out your quick reference guide because that's going to give you um, what number you need to type in for what particular letter you want. But if I wanna access these fonts, I'm going to select that letter A on the face of my machine. So here on the left-hand side is my letter A. I'm simply going to select that and that's my letter A. Then we're going to need to type in using our keypad whichever number letters we want to grab. Some of the awesome features you have are going to be right here on the face of your machine. So I'm going to go to these in a little bit more detail. So first of all, you have an automatic reinforcement key and an automatic cutting key. So let's talk about where those are and how they work. So first of all, right here, I've selected stitch number three for my keypad way of sewing. Right here, this little button is a reverse button with a dot in the middle of it. Now, if I select that, it 
shows up there on my screen, which means when I have that engaged, the machine is going to do the appropriate amount of reversing or reinforcing stitches, depending on which particular stitch I've chosen. It's going to do the right number for me because it's smart and awesome. So now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead over to here. I don't have my foot pedal plugged in, so you can see that I've got a green start stop button, which means I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and select my start stop button. You'll notice the machine does a few stitches forward, backward, and then here we are at the end. So let's say I needed to go a little bit further. I could just do my needle up, needle down, but if I'm at the end of where I need to be, I'm simply going to come up here to my reverse button and tap it. Because I have my automatic reverse on, it does a few extra stitches backwards, comes forwards, and stops right there at the end where it had ended when I selected my stop button. Isn't that great? Okay, so now that we've done that auto reverse, I'm going to go ahead and select it again, and that's going to remove it from the screen. Now, when I select the auto reverse, only the auto reverse is engaged. When I select my scissors right here, the automatic cut function, it actually engages both the auto reverse and the cut. So this is going to help you move much more efficiently through your projects. So now that I've got both of those selected, once again, over here, all I have to do is select my start button. It's going to come forward three stitches, backwards three stitches, and keep on sewing. When I get to the end, I'm going to select stop. And again, if I need to take one more stitch, I simply can. And then here, I'm going to tap my reverse button. It's going to reverse, come forward, and it also just cut for me. So if I lift my presser foot, I can bring my fabric straight on out. And I'm left with this beautiful set of tails right there. I love that auto cut, auto reverse function. Okay, right here, this little button is called Width Control. This Width Control allows me to marry the speed at which I'm sewing, but it actually turns it into where the needle is positioned. So if I select this button right here, there it is indicated on the top of the screen that I have turned on my Width Control mode. Now, if I was to choose a left needle straight stitch and be over here in the far right of my speed control, you'll notice that the needle is on the right side of the presser foot. That's because it's locked into the right because of the speed. So speed has become width. If I toggle it slowly towards the left, I have multiple needle positions, which I can choose to have that needle insert into my fabric exactly where I want it to. Over there on the far left, now we've got our needle in the left position, which is where it should be for stitch number one. So again, I can slide that width control back and forth changing what position my needle is in. So let's say I was going to do a little zigzag stitch here, number six. I can play with this turning it into a satin stitch if I chose to. So I'm going to shorten my stitch length here a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and insert my foot pedal. I need to have my foot pedal installed in order to let the width control actually sew. So now that I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and hold on to my width control and start sewing. It's wide, now it's narrow, now it's medium, wide, narrow. Okay, I'm going to tap my reverse button. It's reversing and cutting for me. Love that auto cut, auto reverse. So now that I'm there, you can see it has gone from wide to narrow and everything in between. It's a super cool treatment that you can use decoratively however you'd like. You'll notice that this button here on the bottom right hand corner of the selection is two needles. That's because this is our twin needle mode. When we select this button, you'll notice that here there are two needles piercing our fabric. So this is going to help me by not letting me choose stitches that the twin needle will not work with. So if I was to try and come up here to something decorative, let's say I wanted to do this number seven decorative stitch.
If I come to my little leaf vine way of selecting, I get an error code. So the machine is preventing me from choosing that because in twin needle mode, I would break my needle. So it's a safety measure, it keeps you in line. So if I was gonna go ahead and say, okay, I clear that message off. Here I am in twin needle mode. If I was to select a different stitch, let's just say, uh, lightning stitch number six. So I'm going to go to my utility key and I'm going to type in zero six. The lightning stitch is a stitch you can choose to do as straight a stitch on stretch fabric as possible. And in twin needle mode, I did not get an error code, which means this is a safe stitch to choose. But most of the time, if you're not using a twin needle, you want to be sure that you only have one needle indicated on your screen and don't touch that button. Okay, I'd like to talk about single versus continuous modes in sewing. So right here you see you have a heart split or divided from a heart and a half. So this is continuous mode and the single heart would be single mode. Right here at the top of our LCD screen, you can see that we are sewing in continuous mode. I have my end foot on because I'm gonna do something decorative and super cool, you guys are gonna love it. So I'm in that decorative selection and in that menu I've chosen stitch number 05, which is a little starburst. I'm going to change this mode from continuous to single. So there I have my single heart, which means I'm gonna have one little circular drop, the little candle wicking stitch. Now I'm gonna add that one little circular drop to this kind of scallop stitch. So I'm gonna select stitch number 09. So that lets me have stitch number 09. Now, if I make that continuous, here we go back to continuous mode. So let's see what this looks like. There you can see it starts off on stitch number five. And then it jumps over to nine. Now back to five. Then it jumps over to nine. Back to five. Jumps over to nine. Okay, I'm gonna tap my reinforce key. You can see that that light turned green. So it finished the stitch for me. It didn't stop just in the middle of it. So if I look at that particular stitch, I have little starbursts and little scallops, little starbursts and little scallops. It's a super cute way of combining your decorative stitches to combine and create a custom stitch path for your projects. Because I just created that cute little candle wicking and scallop stitch and I want, decided I want to use it on several things, I have the ability to save that into the machine's memory pocket. So if you look at this little button here, there's an arrow pointing down into the pocket. When I select that, it's going to save into the machine. Now, how do I access that later? So let's say tomorrow's a new day and I have a new project. I'm going to turn my machine back on and it wakes up in a center needle position stitch. So in order to access that machine's memory pocket, I'm going to come over here to this button. Right now, I'm in the keypad way of selection, but this is kind of like a 3031 on a calendar. You've got a slash dividing it. So if I touch that button once, I'm in the keypad way of selection, but if I touch it a second time, you'll see that it changes over to the memory pocket. And there we have the stitch that we selected ready to go so that I can stitch it out on all of my other projects. Okay, down here you have a clear button. This clear button helps you get rid of a stitch that you might have changed your mind about. So previously I had selected a decorative stitch of 05 in conjunction with my scallop. But if I have changed my mind and I wanna do a different stitch, like let's say 08, I can clear this out and now I can select 08. So that's a little clear button. It kind of deletes the stitch that you've decided to do differently. All right, let's take a moment to discuss these two feet. Your J foot is your standard utility presser foot and your N foot is your decorative foot. So what's the difference between these two? Well, first of all, you can see that the J foot is longer than the N foot. So your J foot is gonna grab a hold of your fabric faster so it has control very quickly. Your N foot, however, is wider because it's covering a larger surface area for you. So it keeps a hold of more 
of your fabric in order for those decorative stitches to form. So when it calls for the J foot, you really should have on the J foot, but you could also use your N foot. However, when your machine tells you to put your N foot on, you must listen because the N foot has a special feature on the back of it. On the N foot, you've got a groove kind of worn into the back of the foot. This allows those decorative stitches that have lots and lots of thread buildup to pass underneath without getting smooshed. So on the J foot, you could see here, you've got a flat area that's going to go against the bed of your machine and against your feed dogs. So if things stop and get jammed up, it's because they don't have the ability to pass underneath. So your end foot is really good for those decorative stitches. This is your G foot. Your G foot is an overcasting foot and it allows you to get a professional finish on the edge of your fabrics. If you choose utility stitch number 14, it's going to come back and forth over the edge of your fabric, sealing the edges so that they don't fray. What you need to do is place your fabric underneath your G foot right along the inside toe of this foot. So your stitches are going to form back and forth over this little metal bar that's inside the G foot. And that way you're gonna have a nice perfect edge on the edge of your fabric. It's very professional looking. Let's see what that looks like. So as it starts stitches, it stitches in the inside of your fabric, and then it's gonna come over to the right and go over that edge. That's why it's called overcasting. Your job is to keep your fabric riding that inside rail of your foot. And that just lets you get that perfect finish. All right, I'm gonna speed up just a little bit. Any fabric that's going to fray, this is something you're going to want to do to prevent that from happening. Okay, when it's done, you'll notice that the thread is over that little metal bar that's inside the G foot. So when you raise your presser foot, you're going to need to slide your fabric off the back of the foot. So there you have that beautiful overcasting stitch. It's a very professional, nice and finished look to your edges of your fabric. Okay, this is your R foot or your blind hem foot. So I just want to take a second to discuss the foot and then we'll talk about how we've placed the fabric underneath it. So right down the center of your blind hem foot, you have this large metal flange. That flange is there because you need to guide this little folded edge of your fabric right up against that in order to create that perfect blind hem. All right, now if we look at the front of our fabric, you'll see that it makes the letter Z. That letter Z is there so that you can get that blind hem. So I've started by wrong side up, my fabric is wrong side up. And then right here, I have folded up the raw edge of my fabric because I'm gonna want that tucked in and concealed within my blind hem. So there we have the bottom and then we're gonna bring the top down around it. So that fold comes right up against it. So you've got your letter Z there, right side down, wrong side up. Up, and this is the hem of my garment. Now I'm gonna make sure it's my job to keep that fold right up against that large metal rail on the center of my R foot. All right, let's see what that looks like. It comes along and takes a little bite out of that fold. So it does about five stitches on the right hand side and leaps over and takes a little bite out of that fold. Again, you just want to take a bite. You don't want to take a chomp. You just need to grab two or three fibers so that you have that perfect little blind hem. Let's just take a few more and then I'll tap my reverse button. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna raise my presser foot and slide my fabric off to the back. Now, if I pull this around to the front and we look at it, you can see that there's tiny little nips out of that fold. So give your fabric a good press, but that is your perfect blind hem. You don't wanna to take too big a slice. You don't want railroad ties across the front of it. You just want little nips on your fabric. And there you have your blind hem.
Okay, we're gonna talk about the zipper foot for a second. So it's a dual foot. You can switch it onto either side, whatever's gonna work best for your project. Right now, I have it situated on the right-hand side of my foot because that's how I'm gonna start with my zipper. So I've prepared my fabric by sewing my two pieces together. This is just a really quick way to install zippers. So the teeth of your zipper are going to end up coming right against the inside rail of the foot right here. And your needle, needs to drop down into that little groove right there. So I'm going to place my fabric under the foot so that that zipper teeth, they're riding right up against there. The bottom of that presser foot is preventing my teeth from getting in the way. So I've chosen a center needle position and we're just gonna go ahead and sew this zipper in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Let me remove that pin. You don't wanna sew over your pins. Okay, so right there at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down my reverse button. And it's done that reverse stitch for me. So one side of my zipper is done. Now I'm going to spin around and I'm going to come at it from this side. So once again, I'm going to place my foot down where the teeth of the zipper are right up against that inside rail of my foot. Go there towards the end. Okay, okay, so let's go ahead and start. Okay, once I've installed my zipper, I can use my seam ripper to open that up and I'll have my zipper ready to go. Okay, this is your A foot. It's got a little bit of an A right there pressed into the plastic at the tip end of your A foot. Your A foot is your buttonhole foot. This buttonhole foot automatically sews the buttonhole to the size of the button that you're putting in it, which is awesome. So you're gonna start by just opening up the inside of your buttonhole foot. That's gonna allow you to then take your button and place it into the foot and then squeeze it down onto the button. Now the diameter of the button is measured right there because it's pinching down on the button and we're gonna have that perfect buttonhole for that button. All right, I'm gonna install this onto the machine. So in order for this foot to make my perfect buttonhole, the diameter of that button needs to be measured again between these two levers. So I'm gonna grab a hold of this buttonhole lever and pull it down. It needs to be all the way down and in between, not in front of this guy, not beside him, but in between this guy and that guy. Once you have it pulled down, you're ready to go. Okay, we're going to position our pre-marked fabric underneath this A foot, our buttonhole foot. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that with our marking, it's going to line up between this, these green marks. And you'll notice that there is a red mark in the center. That center mark is for the center of the buttonhole. I like to line my fabric up along the inside of my foot. And then when I place my foot down, I just need to make sure that I can see that mark right there within my fabric. There it is, right within that opening of my foot. Okay, now, as I sew, you wanna just make sure that you have your fabric placed totally perpendicular so it doesn't go crooked. As I sew, I'm gonna do it at about a medium speed and the machine is gonna take care of everything for me. The trigger is gonna go as soon as that buttonhole lever hits the back arm on the A foot. So it hits that arm and it knows that it needs to go back forward and to, to go the other direction. I just love it. It's so fast and easy. And when it's done, it does its own locking because it knows what it needs to do. And I had the automatic cut function on, and there we go. There's our perfect little buttonhole. When you're done with your buttonhole foot, you need to make sure that you push that buttonhole lever back up into the machine.
This is your M foot, which is your button fitting foot. It comes with this little lever right here, which creates a shank for your button. And I have that lowered so that my button isn't sewn so tightly against my garment that I can't even use it. You wanna make sure that the holes of your button are lined up against these red markings on your foot. So I've selected utility stitch number 68, which is your button fitting stitch. So I just need to, again, make sure that my needle is going to enter these holes properly. So I like to turn my hand wheel towards myself, making sure that it's going to insert itself, not hit the button. So I'm good on my right side and I'm good on my left. Now I'm gonna slow it down and go ahead and select start. And the machine sews this button on for me. Also on this stitch, I've turned off the automatic cutting because I like to have tails. I like to pull my button up out of this foot. And once I've done that, I'm going to take those thread tails and tie off a knot in the back. So there you can see your button is sewn on perfectly for you. Well, that wraps up our lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. Remember, this machine is available in both of our locations, the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore here in Maitland, Florida, or the Sewing Studio at Lady Lake. We also have it available for sale on our website at www.sewing.net. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. And let's go on and take off and sew.